In today's video, I'm going to show you how to calculate or prorate real estate property taxes using the 360 or the 30 day year, which is different than another way that you can calculate property taxes using the 365 day method. Now, I did a video already on how to calculate property taxes using the 365 day year. There's a link right up here in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Click on that little I if you want to watch that one before you watch this one. All right, so let's jump right into today's problem. Tim purchased 123 Main Street. Annual taxes on the property is $1,600 for the calendar year and the seller has prepaid the taxes through December 31st. If closing is September 17th, what amount of taxes will be prorated at closing? Proration is based on a 360 day, 30 day year. The day of closing is the responsibility of the seller. Okay, we have all the information that we need to make our proration calculations. Now, anytime you're doing prorations, as I have said in the other videos dealing with prorations, there are some things, some prerequisites that we have to go through. Number one, are we using a 360 day year or are we using a 365 day year for our method of calculation? And we know from our problem that we're using the 360 or the 30 day method. And all that simply means is no matter how many days are in the month, we are going to base any calculations on 30 days. So January, it's going to be based on 30 days. February, based on 30 days. That's the difference. Number two, are the taxes paid in advance or in arrears? And in this case, the problem told us that the, that the taxes have been paid in advance by the seller. Who is responsible for the day of closing? And the problem told us the seller is responsible for the day of closing. And ultimately, anytime you're dealing with prorations, what the question ultimately wants an answer to is, is it gonna be a buyer cost or a buyer credit, a seller cost and a, or a seller credit, and how much? All right, so let's get to today's video. We know automatically that it's a 360 day process for calculation. We also know that the 17th is the closing, the 17th of September. We also know that the seller has paid the entire month through December 31st. So that tells us right away, based on the information that we have, that the buyer is going to have to, that's going to be a cost or a debit to the buyer because the buyer is going to have to reimburse the seller for these three and a half months that were prepaid. All right, so the buyer, it's gonna be a cost and the seller is gonna get a credit at closing. We also know that annual taxes are $1,600 or $1,600 per calendar year. So that's gonna, that's gonna be our baseline, but here's something that's a little bit different when calculating using the 360 method versus the 365. We actually have to break down the months then the per diem amount. And I'll explain why that matters in just a minute. Now, so we're gonna take, because we gotta break down these months here first, right? So, 1600 divided by 12, because there, there are 12 months in the year, that gives us a monthly rate of $133.33. So, going to our calendar here, we know that October, it's gonna be 133.33. We know November is 133.33. Lots of threes there. And we know that December is 133.33. All right? We also know that closing is the 17th of September, so we're gonna to have to break that down into per diem. We know that the closing's on the 17th, so there's gonna be a certain number of days that the buyer is gonna to have to reimburse the seller for, but we can't do it by just using the monthly rate because we would overpay the seller. So we have to break this down into per diem. So we're gonna take $133.33 and we're gonna divide it by 30, which represents 30 days in our month. And when we do that, that gives us a total amount of $4.44. $4.44. Now, how many days 
are there in September that we're going to multiply by that 444? Well, again, just like I mentioned in a different video, we got to use our fingers here. All right, so the 17th, we know by the problem, is going to be the responsibility of the seller. The seller has to pay it, so the buyer is not going to reimburse them for the day of closing. So that means it's the 18th, 19th, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 13 days. 13 days. All right, so that the buyer is responsible for 13 days in September. So we're going to take $4.44 and we're going to multiply it by 13. And when we do that, that's going to give us a total of $57.72. $57.72. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take, to find out the total amount that's owed, owed we're going to take... $133.33, which is our monthly rate, and multiply it by three full months, which is October, November, December. And that should give us a total of $399.99. And then we're going to add in our month of September of $57.72. And when we add all of this up, that should give us a grand total of $457.71. I'm pretty sure I did the math right there. So, so what's going to happen, or the, the, the correct answer to this question is, the buyer, the cost to the buyer is $457.71, and the credit to the seller is $457.71. So that would be the correct answer. Okay, one thing I want to point out here, anytime you are doing a proration problem involving rents or taxes, a lot of times you can eliminate a couple potential answers right away. Notice that these two numeric values are the same. So in this case, the buyer cost was $457.71 and the seller credit was $457.71. It's the same numeric value. I see this all the time um, from students that call me about their test. And one of the options they'll say is, let's say option C was a, a seller uh, debit of $800 and a buyer credit of $900. Notice the two numeric values are different. When you're taking your real estate exam, if you see this on a proration question involving taxes or rent, you know automatically that C is not even a viable option for the correct answer. You can eliminate that one right away. So obviously it narrows uh, your chance of getting the correct answer. So what we're looking for is matching numeric values here. There you have it. That is prorating taxes.